Loyalty. Duty. Respect. Selfless service. Honor. Integrity. Personal courage. You've seen them helping in our communities in times of distress. Through floods. Through fires. Through hurricanes. Through tornadoes. You've watched them go abroad. And you've heard people call them heroes. They are the men and the women of the National Guard. Fathers, mothers, sons, sisters, neighbors, friends. National Guard soldiers can be found everywhere you go. But not everyone knows what the National Guard is. Today, we're here to tell you all about it. We'll cover everything you want to know, like what is the Guard, how to join, jobs in the Guard, and life in the Guard. From uniforms to fitness, from ranks to benefits, we're pretty sure that after watching this video, you'll understand the National Guard. Let's take a look at a brief history of the Guard. The National Guard is the oldest branch of the U.S. military and goes back more than 360 years to before there was a United States of America. In the face of danger, farmers, doctors, and colonists banded together to protect their families and their freedom. And ever since, citizen soldiers have helped write the history of America. Today, the National Guard's men and women serve in each state and territory, providing a helping hand in their communities and to their nation when they are needed. One of the most important defining factors of the National Guard is that the National Guard has both a state and federal mission. In times of peace, the National Guard is a part-time commitment. Soldiers train year-round, one weekend a month, and two weeks a year to be ready when needed. National Guard soldiers serve in their communities to help and provide relief in times of need like natural disasters, hurricanes, and floods. They can also serve their country in times of war when called upon from the President of the United States. Soldiers usually serve from three to six years, depending on their commitment. So now that you know a little about the history and the nature of the Guard, let's look at a typical transition of becoming a citizen soldier. The first step is to contact a recruiter. A recruiter helps the candidate discuss job opportunities and benefits available to them. After which, if the person feels it's a good fit for them, they can sign up. After signing up, a soldier will attend three programs. The first, RSP, Recruit Sustainment Program. Second, Basic Training. And third, AIT, Advanced Individual Training. The Recruit Sustainment Program, or RSP, provides a taste of guard life before they attend training. RSP gets soldiers into shape and helps them transition into initial active duty training. RSP is a program that is practiced at the local armory during weekends. The next step into the journey is basic combat training. This 10-week training period places emphasis on the well-being, physical health, and abilities of the new recruit. Mentally, you will develop focus and endurance. You'll leave BCT with a strong sense of accomplishment and pride, knowing you're now a soldier. After basic training, soldiers go on to AIT, or Advanced Individual Training. This program trains men and women in a specific military occupational specialty. Simply said, for your job in the Guard. Did you know that the Guard offers over 200 jobs or MOSs? The seven main areas are combat arms, combat support, combat service support, military police and military intelligence, communications, and medical. Within these areas, there are literally hundreds of unique jobs. The best thing about being trained for a job in the Guard is that the training you receive can many times give you a competitive advantage in your civilian career. Well, now we've covered a lot, but you might wonder, what about after you become a soldier? How does it work? What's it like? In the Guard, and in any other military force, soldiers are divided into a level of advancement, experience, responsibility, and authority. These levels and structural divisions are called ranks. Ranks also help to keep the structure in the military to get things done. One of the first things a person learns is how to identify the rank of an enlisted personnel and officers. Ranks can be identified by insignias worn on the uniforms and headpieces, and these definitely help make things easier. There are three main areas of ranks, enlisted soldiers, warrant officers, and commissioned officers. Enlisted soldiers are the strength of the Army. They perform the primary jobs that need to be done. Enlisted members are trained to perform specific specialties in the Army. As enlisted personnel progress up the ranks, 
they assume more responsibility and provide direct supervision to their subordinates. Warrant officers are highly trained and function as a subject matter expert in their particular career field. This is where they differ from commissioned officers. Unlike commissioned officers, warrant officers remain in their primary specialty, provide specialized knowledge, instruction, and leadership to enlisted members and commissioned officers alike. A commissioned officer's primary function is to provide overall management and leadership in their area of responsibility. Unlike enlisted members and warrant officers, commissioned officers do not specialize as much, but have a broad overview of their field. The Guard lifestyle offers an exciting change of pace. There's a lot to learn for a new soldier. Let's look at uniforms. Uniforms are separated into classes. The main three uniforms a soldier will wear are the standard Army Combat Uniform, or ACU, used in any type of military operation, the Class B uniform for men and women, which is used during non-combat operations during times of peace, and the Class A uniform, which resembles a formal suit, used in formal events when required by military protocol. So what about exercise? Soldiers must meet physical standards to be mission ready, so working out is a major part of military life. Generally speaking, when you join the National Guard, you'll get into the best shape of your life. And you'll also learn how to incorporate training into your routine. And with great physical shape comes great mental stamina. Is it challenging? You bet. But all the effort is worth it when you start seeing the results. A leaner, more fit body, and the energy to drive you. So now that you know about the National Guard, you should know that joining the National Guard brings with it a host of benefits. Financially, you'll enjoy getting a monthly Guard paycheck in addition to your regular full-time civilian job. You can also qualify for additional bonuses and incentives. To this, add retirement plans, funds for college, health insurance, and medical benefits. There are too many to list, but your local recruiter can give you all the details. But these are just the tangible benefits. Becoming a soldier can bring you an indescribable sense of honor. You'll also enjoy the pride that comes from giving the best of yourself in service to your community and your country. So you see, from a long and honorable history to countless benefits, to the pride and honor that comes from serving, the men and women of the National Guard are part of a large family, a family of tradition, honor, and service. No matter the rank, location, age, race, or gender, the men and women of the National Guard always work as a team. They are always ready, always there, to serve, to protect, to defend. They are citizen soldiers. And perhaps one day when you hear the word hero being spoken, they might just be talking about you. If you want to learn perhaps a little bit more about the National Guard, we invite you to contact your local recruiter. They are there to help. <laughs>